Abaco Club on Winding Bay in the Bahamas, originally known as a world-class destination for sport fishing, but now with the addition and renovation of this golf course by the Southworth Development Company, it is a world-class destination for golf and obviously a lot of other recreational activities. This episode of The Traveling Golfer brings you inside the gates of this private club that you also might be able to visit. Just mention The Traveling Golfer's name. You're in. Hopefully you'll enjoy all of the beauty and the splendor that the Abaco Club at Winding Bay has to offer. One moment changes everything. Distance, precision, decided in a microsecond. So reduce your ball spin and get the most performance at impact with four yards more. A next-gen golf tee proven by pros and players like you. The unique durable design flexes at contact, reducing ball spin, giving you tighter control and more distance. So change your game and get four yards more. Brought to you by Greenkeepers. Golf smart. This isn't the desert, it's one of the waste areas at the Abaco Club on Winding Bay. This is not Lawrence of Arabia. This is Matt DeMace, golf course superintendent, and the man who came to this paradise from a rather circuitous route. That was a very interesting route. Born in New York, moved to Florida when I was a teenager, school out in Arizona, back to Florida, South Carolina, and now the Bahamas. Well, you came to a golf course that was in transition. Opened in 2004, looked way different than what we see right now, and that was by design. It was. It was a, a Lynx Scottish-style golf course, uh, overgrown by jungle and bush through inception and some early changeover. And uh, when Southworth purchased it in 2014, the goal was to find the golf course. We knew it was here, it had great bones, we just had to find it. You had to either find the fairway or your ball was lost in the jungle. The good courses have opened them up and you did it by establishing a buffer zone around the fairways. We found the native vegetation that was there and literally went with paint guns and sod cutters and just started cutting through the jungle and, and trying to establish those waste area buffer zones. In many of the holes, you stand on that elevated tee and the fairway is so well designed by the waste areas down either side. Not only does it keep you from losing a ball, but I think it really helps your concentration by focusing you on that fairway. Absolutely, the, the, the sand and the waste areas literally outline every hole almost perfectly. And, and you have the sand to the dark green fairways that are nice and striped. I mean, your focus is just put it down the middle. And for those who are afraid of the sand, don't be. This is a packed sand in the waste areas. You can ground your club. It is a little hard pan, so you're not going to get a fluffy lie like you will in a bunker or end up hitting it fat and maybe moving 5, 10 yards. It, it, that's the design. That was the concept. Um, and, and it's really helped playability. It's helped the pace of game when people come out here and play. It, it's really been a home run. Despite the fact that these waste areas and cutting back the jungle have made the course more playable. There's still plenty of teeth in the course. You have some beastly par fours and some short par fours that really make the golfer think. Just because there's no jungle doesn't make it any easier off the tee because you have to deal with the elements, the wind, um, being a link style golf course, the rolling terrain, and then our pot bunkers that protect the fairways and the greens. I mean, there's danger out here, so it's, it's not as easy as people think. Yeah, many of the bunkers, even the fairway bunkers, it's wedge only get it out, and then play to the green. Now, speaking of the greens, I believe they're really the defense of this golf course. You're absolutely right. Whenever we have any member events or we host the web.com event, um, we try to get the greens to a, a challenging fair speed where you're gonna be rewarded for a good shot in, but if you miss the wrong side of the green, it's gonna be penal. And there's plenty of undulation in those greens, which you really are going to need a little bit of help to read those putts. 
first time golfers that come here, just good luck. And then add, the more you play the course, you think you get familiar with the greens, but to your point, the, the undulations are, are rather drastic. Now it's time for the Stracoline putt of the day. When you're confident about the line, you hit a confident putt. And the three putts. One of the greatest improvements to the course has been the addition of paspalum grass, tees, fairways, greens, salt tolerant, hardy. But here on the greens, they actually have almost a bent grass quality in that it's so smooth and they roll out. I love hearing that feedback from players, from members. We strive to have these greens rolling as true and as pure as possible. Key is rolling those greens. I saw the machines out. We roll. Um, you know, we're very aggressive with our cultural practices, with the rolling and, and our height of cuts. But we also have a very lean fertility program that you know we we don't grow a lot of grass, which makes it sticky and slow down the putting surface. And when we host the Web.com event, it, the feedback from the players has been great. They didn't even realize they were putting on past Palum greens. When the Web.com tour comes here, they play number 17 from this back tee. 204 yards, usually into a strong win. Maybe in another life I'd play it here, but I think I'll move up a tee. They often talk about the ability to have fun on the golf course. Despite all of the challenges right here, I think there is more fun fun in this particular golf course than just about any that I've played in the island region. Fifteenth hole, mid-length par four, absolutely breathtaking. This golf course, when we did the redesign and the renovation, the goal was to make it fun, to make it playable so anybody could come out here and play. If you were you know, a weekend warrior or if you were a scratch golfer. And there's no more fun than in not having to look for a golf ball, and you almost never do here, that's the truth. Coconuts! Introducing HL3, the third release in the award-winning Hot Launch series from Master Club designer David Glaude. With a complete lineup from driver to wedge, HL3 offers premium technology and top-of-the-line performance at exceptional prices. The HL3 offset driver features a forged titanium head specifically designed to reduce slices. The offset hosel delivers maximum slice fighting control by allowing the club face to square up at impact for straighter ball flight. Variable face thickness technology provides more contact points on the face that deliver better performance on off-center strikes. The driver's cup face technology increases the amount of face flexing for maximum power and ball speed. For faster club head speed at impact, the driver's design incorporates a new aerodynamic shape. The design also maximizes MOI for more stability at impact. A power channel on the sole behind the club face provides added power, and a rear sole weight moves the center of gravity back to create an easy launch that flies higher and longer. Visit an authorized Tour Edge fitter today and experience the best custom-fitted value in golf including our unprecedented 48-hour guaranteed delivery on custom fit orders. HL3. Get fit. Spend less. Play better. We're on the outstanding short game practice facility at the Abaco Club on Winding Bay. And I've got my short game coach with me, Brian Shaver. His business card says Director of Golf. However, he likes the title Director of Golf and Fun. You'll find out why. Brian, welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Well, I'm sure it is. You've got a great golf course, a great atmosphere to work in, and everybody when they come here has got to be happy. 
everybody's in a good mood when you're coming to Paradise. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this short game facility because, folks, if you come to this golf course, you're going to need to start some practice time right here because the approach shots are very difficult on the course. We have five greens. We have a lot of different lies that you can practice. Short shots, long shots, downhill, side hill, a lot of variety of different shots you can practice. And most importantly, the four most common short shots you'll see on this golf course, the bump and run, the flop shot, the chili dip, and the blade. I don't have to practice those last two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the things out here with this particular type of grass that we have, past pallum grass, it can grab your ball before it actually gets on the green, so you do have to fly it over. And the, this, this area around the practice area is just a perfect place to practice that, that particular shot. Yeah. This is probably one of the more underrated features of golf that was developed in the last 20 years or so, uh, where they started to put in these short game facilities. I don't know one that comes close to this in the entire Caribbean and Atlantic Island region. You've had a web.com tournament here. The pros rave about the whole facility. One of the things that they do is they come over here to the shore game area and they spend hours over here. I've never seen so many pros in one little area hitting <laughs> pitch shots and chip shots in my life. So um, this, this, this place does get a lot of use. The golf course itself, playing this golf course, how would you characterize it? And what tips might you give the golfers when they come here? It's a Scottish tropical links. So we have a lot of deep bunkers you want to kind of try to avoid. And then there's the final major component on certain days, the wind. Yes, when the wind is in your face on the first four holes, it's going to be an easy day because the rest of the holes are going to be played mostly downwind. Swing easy and take a little more club. Well, do me a favor and please invite the traveling golfer out on the calm days. I'll be here and I'll just play, on the windy days, I'll just play downwind. Now it's time to beat the skipper. No, not that skipper, Captain Sam Carroll. You can take us a little boat ride at three hours long. Done a little island hopping through the islands of the Abacos, boating and sailboating capital of the Bahamas. This is boater's heaven. And one of the reasons I'm sure is because there are so many different islands to visit. Well, my favorite happens to be Elbow Key because of Firefly, you know, the historic hometown settlement, lots of gift shops. In the sail shop, they make some interesting items at using sail cloth has been handed down from generation to generation. Abaco is a country within itself because I always tell people Abaco is like a whole lot of the Bahama Islands roll into one. Most people know the big, big islands of Nassau and Freeport, but this is a step back in time and a step toward nature. Right. We love it. Black Fly Lodge, Schooner Bay, South Abaco, Sport was golf. Augusta National. Instead, it is one of the great locations for fly fishing, deep sea fishing in all of the world. We've got the proprietors. Clint Kemp, June Russell, you're the specialist in fly fishing. June, you're the specialist in deep water, deep sea fishing. Tell us a little bit about saltwater fly fishing. Well, saltwater fly fishing and golf go hand in hand. A lot of professional golfers are great fly fishermen. It's a very similar sport. This, the, the casting is similar to the golf swing. It's about timing. It's about patience. It's about practice. We have Darren Clark, who actually caught his first permit with us here at the lodge. Spends a lot of time here and fishes with us. Uh, same with Lee Westwood. He comes and fishes with us as well. We're the fishing partner with Abaco Club, so a lot of our guests enjoy the golf and the fishing. Correct. We go about five minutes offshore and we're lines in already. We start to troll 
and uh, we could have fish on within 10, 15 minutes of putting our lines in. Five miles out, we're 10,000 feet. So we have a great fishing ground here. All the bait comes in, all the big fish come in, sailfish, wahoo, dolphin, tuna. Everybody's very comfortable when they go out because they could still really see the land as we fish. So for those who finally get a little more comfortable when they get on land, the lodge, that's total comfort. The lodge is reminiscent of the clubhouse at Augusta to give the feel that it's been here for 50 years. Sort of like how it used to be, only better. We've got uh, super comfort, high-speed internet, super comfortable beds, great showers, all the rest of it, what you'd expect to find at a world-class lodge. And how many rooms? We have eight rooms, eight single rooms. They're soundproof, centrally air-conditioned, very comfortable. With the sound of the water lapping on the shores of Winding Bay, we went right to the top. David Southworth, founder of Southworth Development, and founder is a good word because you found paradise here. We clearly did find paradise. I was like the fact that you pull through the gate, you arrive at the Welcome Center, you get into your cart, and you start to cascade over the hill, and you see all of this. You see Winding Bay, the waters of the Atlantic, and beyond, and it's just magical. You know, when the Abaco Club was set up, it was designed to be a, a great sporting club. We were fortunate enough to uh, take control of the club in December of uh, 2014. Unlike many areas of the Bahamas, we have great uh, grade changes here, elevations, which made for spectacular golf. It makes for spectacular homes and home sites. The views, of course, are unparalleled. But we also have the land to do all the other sporting activities, the sailing, the boating, it goes on and on. You know, in addition to the water, we can do shooting, we can do archery, we can do tennis. On top of the hill is a restaurant called the Cliff House. The Cliff House is really the fine dining establishment, and uh, it, you can get just about anything you want there. It's a gourmet restaurant. It needs to be to support a community like this. It's kind of that Ernest Hemingway type Bahamian wood authentic look. Now we have flippers right behind us here, the beachfront bar and restaurant that's pretty tough to pry me out of here. We love the beach bar, we love uh, other type food and beverage experiences. Uh, you know, once, twice, three times a week, uh, hitting a place like the Cliff House is uh, special. All right, now for the tough question. Enough softballs, I'm pinning you to the wall here. Okay. Of the famous Bahamian iconic drinks, which is your favorite? I have to say for a couple reasons, a blaster at Pete's Pub. <laughs> Tell us how the membership works here at the Abaco Club. It, it, the, the Abaco Club is a private community. Uh, people can come visit us uh, up to three times before uh, deciding to join or, or never to return. We hope they join and, and uh, buy and live happily ever after. Surprisingly, about 20, 25% of our residents are from the UK. Uh, from the states, we have a large contingent from uh, the New England area, the tri-state area, Florida, but they're really scattered about. You know, it's 195 miles off the coast of uh, eastern Florida. It's considered uh, really to be the upscale island uh, within the Bahamas. It has great medical uh, here, grocery stores, in addition to all the, the natural uh, comforts of the island. I turn on my TV just like I'm at home and every cable channel and the internet is just as quick and the telephone service and everything. There's no sacrifice. When you come to the Abaco Club on Winding Bay, well, you may want to stay here. You may never want to leave. If so, Christy Hull, Director of Sales. She's the one who can put you in the right home. I think you found mine. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a fabulous choice. We have our cabanas, which are one bedrooms. They're standalone structures right along the first fairway of the golf course. We're also selling those. And then there's also the option of our two, three, four, and five bedroom cottage villas, which are up high on an elevated bluff and just offer spectacular views of the bay and the beach. And then of course, we're sitting in front of a spectacular estate, which is right along the beach. And there are homes like this for sale. And there are also homes like this, estates that are available for rent. That is a nice assortment of options because you really can fit just about everybody. You want a nice place because you don't want to leave. Absolutely. <laughs> With just about everything you'd possibly want right on property. Wonderful beach, beautiful golf course, awesome practice facility, and just a number of water toys. It's just spectacular. Whatever accommodations you 
choose at the Abaco Club. Getting around, you make it easy. Absolutely, everybody is given a golf cart, whether they're staying in the cabanas, the cottage villas, or the estates, and so they can travel around the community, which is easy to, to get around to all the amenities. Everything's close by. And we really define this place as barefoot luxury. So it is um, very beachy, very comfortable, but the very best of, uh, of what you can expect when you're in the islands. I love the term barefoot luxury. I'm gonna kick off my shoes and take advantage of the lifestyle here at the Abaco Club. Sunset at the Abaco Club on Winding Bay. This is the time of the day when the members review the events of the day, take in the beauty of Mother Nature, and maybe find a cold drink to help them enjoy the atmosphere. Bartender Marianne is here. It's a painful time for the traveling golfer because this means I've got to say goodbye to this paradise, to my good friends that I've met, maybe one of the iconic island drinks. How about a painkiller? The traveling golfer's up for that. Here we go on another adventure. We hope you enjoyed this one, and please stay with us down the golf road as we go to many more paradises with the traveling golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of the Traveling Golfer.